When most people think about building wealth, they think about investing, scoring a big win in the stock market, something like that, or maybe starting a business that becomes really successful. And that's all great. I think about that stuff too. I think about it a lot. I think you should too. It's a big part of growing wealth, is scoring a big investing win. But for most of us, there's something that is way more important than growing your money in the stock market or scoring a big investing win. And that is simple savings. Saving money from each paycheck consistently and over time, that's what makes the biggest difference in your financial future. And a lot of people don't wanna hear that because it's boring and savings can sometimes be hard. But for most people, especially if you're younger, your ability to save is way more important to think about than your ability to invest like a pro. Let me tell you a little story about cars and trucks to show you what I mean. Now think about energy, the global energy industry of natural gas and solar, that kind of energy. The biggest energy story of the last four decades, if you can believe it or not, has nothing to do with oil or gas and has nothing to do with wind turbines or solar panels. The biggest story is something you can't even touch or look at. It's much more different than that. And you know what it is? The biggest energy story? It's efficiency. Cars and trucks and planes and buildings have become so much more energy efficient over the last 40 years. Like astoundingly more efficient. A big giant pickup truck today probably gets the same gas mileage as a small compact car did 40 years ago. These are some big numbers we're talking about. In the United States, we use 60% less energy per dollar of GDP today than we did in 1950. Globally, energy efficiency has improved 20, 25% since 1990. Now, in the last 40 years in the United States, oil and gas production has risen about 65%, which is, which is good, that's a lot. But energy efficiency across the economy has more than doubled. So that just shows that what was the most important energy story of the last 40 years that made the biggest difference, that moved the needle, it wasn't an oil field or a solar panel. It was efficient engines. Because let's say if you're in the energy industry and you're thinking about how to supply the next generation with energy, you probably spend most of your time thinking about new forms of energy. Maybe it's gas or solar or whatever. You're looking for new forms of energy. It is way less intuitive to think that the way that we can improve the energy situation is to use less of it and become more energy efficient. But that's what actually worked. That's what moved the needle and helped the world in its energy crisis in the biggest way. And I think it's the same with money. I mean, your ability to live, live below your means, save money, keep your expectations in check, that's the equivalent of a car becoming more energy inefficient. It's not growing your money. It's not making money in the stock market. It's just becoming more efficient in your personal finances. And it is so incredibly important. And the reason that it can be more powerful than investing is because it's also in your control. I mean, let me show you what I mean. Let's say that you and I have the same net worth. And let's say that you are a better investor than I am. Let's just say, hypothetically, you can earn a 12% annual return. And I can only earn a 10% annual return. Which one of us will be richer over time? This isn't a trick question, but the answer might not be that intuitive. Because let's say that I can live perfectly happy on $20,000 a year, but let's say that you require $80,000 a year to live a happy life. Now who's better off? Even though I'm earning a lower return, I'm better off just because I'm saving more and I need less. And the best part of this is that the savings rate is largely in your control. Way more than the stock market returns are in your control. I can't control what the stock market does next, and neither can you. But lifestyle that I live, I can control that. How much money I spend and save, that I can control, that I can influence. Controlling my ego and desire to show off or wanting more, that is in my control. There's so much effort in the financial industry that goes into trying to squeeze out every fraction of 1% of extra return from your investments. How to earn higher returns and pick stocks better. And again, that's not bad, I like that stuff. But for most people, the idea of trying to increase your returns by you know, 1% per year is way less powerful 
than your ability to reduce your budget, live within your means by maybe, you know, 10% more than you're doing now. That's what's going to make the biggest difference. The idea that reducing your needs has the same impact as increasing your income, but the former is more certain and it's more in your control than the latter. So it has a higher expected value. It's more important to you. That is as true for someone who earns $15,000 per year as someone who earns $15 million per year. It doesn't matter how much you make. The math is the same. My personal investments are designed to maximize for sleeping well at night, not necessarily scouting the highest returns or finding the next big win. But my wife and I are so good at happily living an efficient life, some might even call us cheap, that adding our lifestyle efficiency to our investment returns leaves us better off than other people who might earn higher returns than we do. We might even feel richer, even if we're earning lower returns because our expectations are in check. And to me, that's amazing. And I challenge you to do the same. Wealth, again, is a two-part equation. You need income and you need to spend less than that income. It's the difference between the two that becomes wealth. And you can often move the needle by a higher amount by focusing more on spending and saving side of the equation. Thank you very much.